In a world right now, under the conditions that most of the world is going through, we are living without sports. Now that doesn't mean we can't watch sports or learn about sports documentaries on the way. We just have no live sports at the moment. So, because we have no live sports, this is the perfect time to revisit history, look at some of the greatest documentaries, sports documentaries, in history, especially with the new Michael Jordan series, The Last Dance, coming out tonight. So, with that in mind, I'm Nick Dwyer here with the 10th inning, giving you 10 must-watch sports documentaries, either before tonight or after tonight. All five parts of this TV series, The Last Dance, will not be airing tonight. The first two parts are airing tonight, and then every Sunday after that, we will get more parts. So, there's plenty of time to fill in the rest of the week, the rest of your time, with sports documentaries. Now, these aren't documentaries that I think are the greatest of all time. These are just 10 must-watch documentaries, and I will be coming out with more because there are much more than just 10 must-watch documentaries. But if you guys like this list, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the 10th inning for more videos like this. Without further ado, let's get into it. At number 10, Without Bias. Without Bias is one of ESPN's 30 for 30s that they did. The story of one of the most tragic ends to a professional sports career. And it was a professional sports career that never even got started. Len Bias went from not a big recruit in high school to playing at the University of Maryland, quickly becoming one of the best players in all of college basketball. Some even compared him to Michael Jordan. He actually went against Michael Jordan a couple times at UNC. But then draft night. Drafted by the Boston Celtics, second overall, and overdosed on cocaine, died that night, never got a chance to show his true talents in the NBA. Some say he may have been better than MJ. I'm not here to argue otherwise. But beyond the vivid first-hand accounts of his life, highlighting both of his character and playing ability, the movie goes beyond his life. Not only did it show the light of the era of crack and cocaine in the mid-80s, but it also brought with that a superstar, a potential superstar's death because of it. It brought to how drug policies were enacted and affected in America after his death. At number 9, The Two Escobars. What makes The Two Escobars interesting over everything else on this list, it wasn't primarily focused on sports. Yes, The Two Escobars is exactly what you think of. You have two Escobars, Pablo Escobar and Andres Escobar. Now, Andres Escobar, the captain of the Colombian soccer team in 1994. Pablo Escobar the leader of possibly one of the most dangerous and effective drug cartels in all of history. What makes this interesting is you have a Colombian national team who was coming to the rise because of Andres Escobar, and not only did Pablo Escobar die maybe prematurely for what he was doing, but Andres Escobar was murdered before he had a chance to help the team in the 1994 World Cup. It's a story of glory and tragedy, possibly one of ESPN's best 30 for 30s that they did. At number eight, No No. No No, again, exactly what it sounds like, a no hitter. Well, why is a no hitter impressive? You have 295 no hitters in US pro baseball history. So why is this impressive? Because you could do a documentary out of any of them. Well, Doc Ellis in 1970, threw a no-hitter on LSD. Yes, while he was on drugs, while he was hallucinating, he threw a no-hitter. And not only does it talk about how he threw the no-hitter after, but it talks about how he went into drug rehab and now he's helping out people who are addicted to drugs in the aftermath of his baseball career. It's an emotional story that is just kind of beaten out by an even more impressive feat that he was able to do one of the hardest things in all of baseball while intoxicated. But it's a very emotional story, one that doesn't necessarily seem like it will be. At number 7, Hoop Dreams. Now, Hoop Dreams has been compared to the Citizen Kane of sports documentaries. Obviously, it's not a movie like Citizen Kane, one of the greatest movies of all time. But it's compared to it because it's one of the greatest sports documentaries of all time. All sports documentaries now look up to Hoop Dreams. Everyone does it. A film crew originally was looking to just make a 30-minute documentary on prospects looking to be professional basketball players for their lives. That plan completely changed and they ended up making a three-hour film about two men in particular. Five years in Chicago with two schoolboy basketball prospects and their families to craft a near three-hour film with a range of depth and insight not seen before. This film 
not only saw them in their basketball career, but gave us a view that we really never saw before as the fans looking into. We saw what their personal life went through in Chicago trying to become two great basketball players. At number six, when we were kings. The Rumble in the Jungle is regarded as one of the best fights of all time between George Foreman and Muhammad Ali. When We Are Kings is a documentary about that fight. It gives you insight on that fight like you've never seen it before. You get to go behind the scenes and see what made Ali a transcendent star and why the fight remains a signature event in boxing. You also get to see some comments and video of these two men in their prime, George Foreman and Muhammad Ali. Anyone who wants to see what Muhammad Ali was like during his prime, When We Were Kings is a must-see. At number 5, Beyond the Mat. Beyond the Mat is a wrestling documentary that gives you an unsettling look under the world of professional wrestling. It profiles drug abuse, broken lives of the men who literally gave everything they had for the sport they love. Because yes, wrestling may be predetermined, but it's the farthest thing you can get from fake. In Beyond the Mat, you see the lives of men like Jake the Snake Roberts, Mankind, McFoley, who explain how they basically gave everything what they had, and you see people abusing drugs and alcohol. You see what it's really like behind some of these men's lives in Beyond the Mat. Beyond the Mat is one of the most, I'll say, heartbreaking documentaries on this list, but it's a must-see for people who don't give respect to these professionals. At number four, Tyson. Mike Tyson was one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, had one of the hardest punches of all time. This documentary is all about him. It gives you an insight on the man like you've never seen before. If you really want to see how Tyson rose to fame, how Tyson overcame adversity in his life, what Tyson does now, and see stuff you never ever would have expected out of Mike Tyson, watch this documentary. At number three, kind of the same thing, Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant, the eighth wonder of the world. He was one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time, but really one of the greatest spectacles of all time. This is the documentary about Andre the Giant's life, from growing up in France to becoming one of the world's biggest stars in WWE. If you're interested in the man, the myth, the legend, take a look at Andre the Giant. It's one of the best made documentaries, I think, on Andre the Giant, who's had a lot of videos made specifically about him because he's just such an interesting man. You hear, you hear stories that you think were only myths about people that turned out to be real. At number two, Free Solo. Free Solo is about a person who wanted to free solo climb Yosemite Nationals Park El Captain. He wanted to be the first, and obviously, free solo climb. You don't have a harness. You don't have rope. You're going free fall. The fascinating part about this is you get to see inside Alex Honnold's psyche about what made him want to attempt to climb where if he made one mistake, he could easily die. You get to see a part that not many people see because you think, well, this guy's crazy. Why would he want to do that when he knew what he's risking? Well, you get to actually see what he was thinking, why he wanted to do it. At number one, OJ made in America. Now, you knew something about OJ was most likely going to be number one, but that's because he's one of the most captivating people to make a documentary about. OJ made in America was a 467 minute epic that was told in five parts. It doesn't just describe what happened in 1994 with the double murder of Simpson's wife and his friend Ron Goldman, but it also talks about the story of Los Angeles long, troubled relationship with African Americans that OJ has had, and it really just talks about everything that led up to what happened in 1994. OJ is one of the most interesting men to make a documentary about, and OJ Made in America did it great. Those are 10 must-watch documentaries, either before or after The Last Dance, which will premiere tonight on ESPN. If you guys have any other must-watch documentaries, let me know down in the comment section. Again, I will be doing another list of this because there are more than just 10 great documentaries out there. But let me know down in the comment section. For Nick Wire and the 10th inning, 